Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. Once again, our study comes from Luke chapter 7, starting with verse 36 through 50. I encourage you to read that. Even if you read it yesterday or the day before, read it again before we go on. Yesterday, we talked about the fact that he, here is Simon. Uh, in his heart, he says, man, if this guy... Jesus uh, was a real prophet he'd recognize what kind of woman is touching him and wouldn't allow it to happen and yet Jesus said I have something to tell you and he talks about a creditor who has two debtors who owe him money one owes him 50 denarii, denarii the other one owns 500 in other words uh, 50 times more but neither one of them had enough money to pay the debt that they owed Okay, so we, what we must understand is that the condition for being forgiven is to realize that we are broke and insolvent, whether we have, uh, are, are accomplished moralists or accomplished sinners. Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any difference if you're a Pharisee. Doesn't make any difference if you're a pro prostitute. The sins, see, the wages of sin is death. You don't have an... All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Both of those come from Romans. Uh, those scriptures come from Romans. All have sinned. All, everyone, whether Pharisee or pro uh, prostitute, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. So we do not have the solvency in, other t in order to pay the debt that we owe. We are separated from God and have no access to him. And so Jesus comes along and pays that debt to give us access to the Father. This woman recognized that. This Pharisee did not recognize that. Why? Because he was all into self. He was all, well, look who I am. I'm a Pharisee. That's a very dangerous, dangerous place to be. This is the problem. People keep trying to persuade God to accept the currency of their own making. In other words, they want to say, I have a currency, it's called integrity. Look at me, I'm a good person. That's not what gets you to heaven. Another one might say, well, look at, I have domestic currency. Why is that? Well, you know, I, I, I'm faithful to my wife. I don't cheat on her. I don't look at pornography and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't make any difference. You're still a sinner because you sinned and the wages of sin is death. You still deserve death. You could say, well, wait a minute, let me use my social uh, currency. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, or I'm colorblind, I'm not, I'm not a racist, uh, I give to the poor, I do wonderful things for the community. Doesn't make any difference, that's not what gives you to heaven. You could say, wait a minute, let me use my church currency. See, I come to church and I give them my tithes and offerings and I worship God. See, all of those things are good. There's no question about it. But that's not what gets you to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This woman recognized that. and She didn't care who it upset. She was there to develop this relationship with Jesus Christ. She was there to be, um, uh, to be made whole. And the Bible says that he heals the brokenhearted, sets at liberty those who are in captivity. She knew that. She ran to Jesus. But the Pharisee, oh, wait a minute. He didn't even do the things that are, they're normally supposed to do, like greet him with a holy kiss or wash his feet or uh, anoint him with oil. He didn't do those things because he's high and mighty. That would get you in a lot of trouble, folks, a lot of trouble. Um. So we need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I've got one more thing that's very, very important for us to understand. Here in, uh, uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 34, it says, awake to righteousness and sin not. Here's the problem with this story. Many people think, oh, I've got to look at my sin. I've got to become sin conscious because my sin consciousness makes me see my brokenness. That's probably true before you're saved because you are broken. You are destined for hell because no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. You need a Savior, no question. But once you give yourself to Christ, once you are a born-again believer... Then we need to awake to righteousness and sin not. 
See, we need to awake to our right position in Christ. We need to understand that he has made us his righteousness. His grace has saved us through faith. He has made us partakers of his divine nature. He has made us his children. He has made us partakers of Christ. He has given us the mind of Christ. He has given us his spirit and all these things. Now, if I awaken to that, which is called righteousness, it's right standing before God, I won't sin. But see, at the beginning, yes, I need to see my brokenness through my sin. I can't heal myself. But once I have been healed, once I have been saved, once I have been delivered, now what I need to do is wake to, awake to my right standing before God because it's the goodness of God that calls us to repentance. Who and we have a good God. All right, we'll pick this up again tomorrow. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.